Hello, hi, how's it? In the name of Jesus Christ, how are you doing? It's your girl, Cran K. Gagarabo. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're stiller, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party, is that just not the story of our lives? My goodness, why am I not situated? Um, anyway, let me just put some caveats out there. Uh, kindly look out for my captions, they're not always accurate. They are sometimes misspelled, it is sometimes the wrong word altogether, that's not really what I would have. I would go out as. But I presently don't have an incentive to edit them because there's barely anybody watching my long form content. So I just kind of leave them that way. And my prayer is that you will understand. One day, God willing, in the future I will edit them, but that time is a highly unlikely coming. But anyway, we're gonna enter into somewhat discussion concerning exactly that very thing as at present. Mm. And then next up, I'm very potentially, it's cold, y'all. It's like all windy, drafty, like it's just crazy, crazy, ridiculous. But anyway, yeah, um, yes, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. It tends to bounce off and on my face. Ugh. I'm not shape shifting. Okay, just putting that out there. Anticipate that. And then I have a segment, kind of, uh, I'm only human after all, I'm only human after all, I'm only human after all. Don't take a jabity jab at me. Do a bit of thing. This here is an empathy segment I added in all of my videos because it's my segment and I'm sticking to it. Uh, I've just chosen it and yeah, it's to uh, display that I've got blood in my body when you prick me. I bleed when you afflict me. I get afflicted. All that jazz, etc. It's just like y'all. And move on. The intention is to bring forth a blush in order to display that I've got blood in my body and that I can essentially die. I don't know if it worked. If it didn't, ugh, another day's another day. But I did. I, I think it did work. I can see it. Anywho, anyhow, um, let's get straight into it. So today's the sixth of July, twenty twenty-four. Um, but it's actually the fifth because I'm hopping over into the next day. It's actually it's the wee hours of the morning. Uh, Y'all know I, I tend to skip over into the next day. If it's the first time watching my video, that's what I do. I record my videos in the wee hours of the next day, but I will not have slept like y'all yeah, because I sleep like much later on. So it's actually really the fifth, but it's the sixth. Anyway, whatever, whatever, whatever. Guys, um, alrighty. So yesterday I was under a severity of demonic attack. You would know that if you watched me yesterday, right? Uh, if, if you watched my video yesterday, but, uh, if not, then I am letting you know that yesterday I was under a severity of demonic attack and it was just oh, overwhelming, right? And that demonic attack produced music because that's just what happens when I'm sorrowful. I just work and then I conquer, okay? We overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. I conquer it's Vaseline. It's shining underneath my eyes there. I use it as an eye cream. Cheap. And it works. Anyway, um, we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so I had testified and I sang and it, it improved my mood. Uh, and today, and my general, like, yeah, sci emo emotional climate, like, uh, my, my psychological space, the demonic attack that was all up in my grill, it dissipated because, yeah, conquer vibes, right? Uh, today woke up better, a lot better. Like, my life was not nearly as bad as yesterday. Um, but it's cold, so I worked out in that blizzard. I could not even feel the exercise. The cold was just piercing through me. I've, all, I've often wondered why it is that people that end up passing away from hypothermia in like super cold regions, why do they, why don't they, why they don't just take a jog and and so warm their bodies up that way? Because exercise makes you feel so hot. Yeah, well now I know because sometimes the cold is just too extreme for you to actually get hot and be able to work out in just like a t-shirt. Yeah, my fingers were frozen. Uh, yeah, anyway, whatever. But I pushed. Okay. I pushed. Perhaps next time I'll wear a bomber jacket and some gloves because the stopping exercise is definitely not a thing that I am doing. Um, other than the cold, however, I, w I was generally okay. I was better nyana. Do you understand? I was better nyana, just ever so, like, not nyana. I was, I was significantly better in comparison to yesterday. Yesterday I had like a barrage. It's almost like it was the tail end of some operating death spell and it was supposed to fulfill its mission by the end of yesterday. And so it worked real hard and it failed. The demarcation beyond which uh, entities cannot go because the Lord tells them you will go this far with my servant and no further. It was reached yesterday and today I woke up surprisingly like good peoples, okay? I woke up surprisingly all right, despite the derision that I st I still continu continuously get funneled to understand is the general status quo. And so I'm going to let you guys know of what it is that God showed me. Guys, a dire, 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 like as in crazy dire time is coming. All right. A very horrific time is coming. And God has just confirmed it to me. And y'all, who? Yes, like it, but like, um, mm-mm. 
ja, yo, ich, man, I just wanna skip past these ads on YouTube. I just, I can't stand them because some of them are just so ungodly and, and so esoteric and so, like, just, yeah, just ungodly. Yeah, and I can tell just by looking at what the ad is that it's ungodly, so it distracts me. Uh, like a lot of new agey stuff. So I'm skipping past it. I have to have to keep it playing back there because my computer must always just stay on. Otherwise, switching it on from sleep mode. Yo, I'll have to restart because it's like super slow right now. Anyway, whatever. Um, ridiculous fact there that was unnecessary to mention, but I mentioned it anyway. You guys, we are entering into a horrific... Not we. I don't know why I'm making myself part of that collective. The human race is about to enter into quite a dire situation. A dire time. A horrendous time. We are at the end, y'all, and God keeps confirming to me time and time again, and albeit people imaginative that I am pessimistic or whatever, but we're entering a horrific time. You guys know, if at all you watch me consistently, that the bane of my existence are men into love juju, love spells, love corobella. That's still all up in my grill. I woke up from a dream from some yet another Gen Z, all up in trying to kiss my neck, and I'm like, where do these guys find my ministry? And then make a decision to just cast spells on totals to strangers online. But I also spoke about how it is that that, that, that licentious general disposition and people in this pornographic society to just want to lay with consecrated folk who belong to God is exactly fulfillment of Bible prophecy in the sense that the Lord said in Matthew 24 that in the last days it's going to be like the days of Noah and the days of Sodom and we all know that Sodom was this crazy town where it is that people thoroughly when somebody was a new guest all up in there they just wanted to rape them it was just a licentious society full of pornography full of sexual immorality it was just a debased society where everything just goes and these people there was nobody staying them from it like no moral compass it was just essentially a whole bunch of incontinent people that lack self-control like a city without walls a bear robbed of its cubs going all rogue it was ridiculous times and there was nothing that could be spoken to speak sense into them their consciences refused to come to their rescue and so they just became completely seared in those consciences and were therefore debased and god just killed them all with that um fire and brimstone uh however not first before extracting lot and co with the wife being turned into a pillar of salt right well this a persistent pursuit of my person by licentious men who are like trying to bash down doors saying bring her out that we might sleep with her is characteristic of the days of sodom uh yeah they find beings that have been sent by god messengers of god gospel servants and they just want to fornicate with them uh not only are men all up in my grill but i i already made mention of uh, to you guys that this this here suggestion is so silly that i barely speak about it even though i dream about it a whole bunch the lgbt community vibe types um what do you call this insistences like women that that are trying to see if maybe i won't consider them since i'm so mad at I'm not mad at men. I am upset at ungodly men and they tend to be the ones all up in my grill. I recognize that there are a lot who are sober out there. Okay? But uh, all of my conversations concerning these stunt workers in the occult that are always trying to take things that don't belong to them. Yeah. Uh, has, has every so often spurred up in the bones of silly women licentious too pornographic also essentially just ridiculous like the men that think that because i'm so apparently mad at men i'm not mad at men let's just put that out there it's just one category of occult beastly randos that i can't stand i'm calling out sin not every human being is all up in that gangstrosity okay yeah uh because i am apparently allegedly always so mad at men these random females i'll just be feeling like maybe one day i can love them tender love them sweet i'm straight like that's never gonna change coupled with the fact that i don't even understand what that whole lesbian thing is because who in the world can operate without all that that men have anyway whatever that's your choice you have exchanged the natural things of god for unnatural things and so god hands you over to a debased mind but i barely ever speak about the lgbt component of the attack that comes at me because it's literally that ridiculous and it's got so many other people talking about it so i'm not going to give it air time flair and pride seeing as it has taken our rainbow i will not give it more do you understand what i'm saying but the, that whole licentious thing of saying bring them out that we might have sex with them it's, it's properly being fulfilled like literally hand to love sodom hand to love sodom is being fulfilled in these last days where it is that there's going to be a salivating after the 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 the, the, the virtue that is in godly people by licentious incontinent breaking down doors type people it's the way that it's going to be 
and then the days of Noah, uh, which are also characteristic of the last days, or the last days are characteristic of the days of Noah. We all know that it was written in God's word therein, is written in God's word therein, uh, in the book of Genesis, that their thoughts and their intentions were evil continually. I just recently did a video about that where I was lamenting about trashy thoughts, okay? And I went like into in-depth explanation about it and how it is that all these trashy thoughts need to cease and desist. Uh, really and truly nobody can be sustained and that's dead. But you know, continuing they do anyway. So we just kind of move on and realize that we are there. We've arrived. Having parked our cars at the destination, all that's left now is for us to go in the venue and eat some dinner. Yeah, we've gotten, we're, we're there. Yo, Christians, we have parked. We're there, yo. Anyway, righto. Uh, so the days of Noah, the, the, the thoughts and intentions of mankind were evil continually, and that is what is presently happening. All right, th those are the two facets that I've been covering off late, and I, I guess this particular facet, facet, I've also been covering it, but from what I saw in my dream, yo, guys, I know, guzo shu, but this a, a severity of judgment is coming, y'all, like what, to professing Christians. It is written, hey, guys, yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't know what time it is. Y'all don't know what time it is. You presently don't know what time it is, but y'all is gonna find out. You're gonna find out. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yo, guys, what I saw. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Man, it was disturbing. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm joking. <clears throat> it was so disturbing. It was so disturbing. It is written in God's word. I, I feel like we, we need to go to God's word for this, okay? Mm. Instead of me just saying it is written, it is written, let's rather actually go there and unfold this. Where's my little Bible? We, we I, like I keep re repeating this, right? If people are guilty, y'all, now is the time. Today's the day of the Lord, the acceptable day of the Lord, the day of salvation. Uh, don't just hold your faces and all that grief. Actually, turn to God, a broken and a contrite spirit. He will not despise. Psalm fifty-one, Hallelujah. So if you're feeling some kind of way, come home, prodigal. Like don't waste time on just like <laughs> sobbing and like releasing some snot. The snot is not going to do anything for you unless that snot is um, sent up to the heavens as a fragrance. Because it's contrite snot. Otherwise, it's just useless snot, all right? We, we don't care about useless snot. In the kingdom of heaven, we care about contrite tears and not those that kind that lead to death. Because it's written in God's word that there are two types of snot, otherwise known as grief. Uh, there is godly grief. In other words, when you cry and release all that snot, yeah, uh, it leads to repentance. And then there is a worldly grief, a worldly sorrow, a worldly guilt that leads to death. So if your snot is worldly, don't nobody care, let it dry up. If anything, it'll burn in the flames of hell, so that'll do the drying up for itself. Do a better thing by yourselves, guys. Just get born again. And again, I already did a video where I was speaking about worldly snot. Um, like, just snot and trana. Just, like, don't nobody care, ultimately. Uh, you, you might en engender some kind of compassion from those who don't understand what's going on here, but from the heavens, the, the legions of heavens, and for heaven's exploits, your snot don't mean jack if it is not a contrite batch of snot. Alright, anyway, whatever, let's just get into um, the word of God, because we're, we're going to get into the word of God, right? Hallelujah, amen. Praise Jesus Christ, our Savior, Messiah, and all things wonderful and spectacular and super califragilistic expelidocious. Because that's just God, y'all. All right, uh, let's talk about what under heaven is gonna happen, all right? I already did a vlog. I've got like, yo, guys, like a plethora. I've got a plethora of content. Speaking about pretty much the same stuff that I just keep on uploading and I upload my content daily There was a time when I was even uploading a couple of times a day So I literally have got thousands of videos with a whole bunch of prophecy in them on YouTube that are unperused or barely perused Ones and zeros binary code. It's all very travesty, right? It's a gargantuan travesty, but it does not matter because all that content will ultimately be watched because the Lord is gonna love me for a thousand years and a thousand more and before then, uh, people are going to listen to the work that they ignored of my person. But just to give you, uh, you know, an annex, a page, an index page or something, you know, uh, to give you like, you know, titles that you perhaps maybe can like search for on YouTube. I don't know, like do the mathematics to actually find those videos in my channel. Let me just put this out there. I have done videos explaining what God is going to do with the whole chunk of advantage takers i already spoke yesterday briefly i touched on it ever so briefly because you know it was not the main topic here when i was speaking about no yesterday i was well, yesterday i was speaking about i was singing about how it is that the lord is going to keep me in the faith and everything uh despite all the persecution that was yesterday's uh, work but the day before i was speaking about the tribulation that is coming and there's a segment a portion of people that i mentioned and i also made mention of the fact that i had already exposited 
on all that in the past where it is that I, I i blew up just one segment of the chat so yesterday that video even though it was like an hour 44 minutes long time bolted so it was already cut like silence was taken out and everything even though it was an hour 44 minutes long it was made up of bits or silos of content that i have blown up on their own in the past and discuss them like the cannibalism of children that is coming in the tribulation i i spoke about that on its own in a video in the past um i spoke about the, the the muslim community and how some of them are going to refuse to take the mark of the beast because of allah but then at the second coming of the lord jesus christ they will repent and those will be the elect gentiles right elect muslims like they are gentiles just like us they're not the jews i i spoke about uh, God's plan for salvation for the poor people, I, uh, the poor of this world that are very hard to get to in terms of the gospel. How it is that because of their natural skills to survive, they are going to be enabled to get to the end of the tribulation and only at the end, Christ himself is going to be their evangelist. Christ himself is going to bring them to himself because he's the God of the fatherless, of the widow, of the orphan, etc. I have I expanded individually on those topics in the past. And then there was an expansion that the Lord is insisting I reiterate on now because we are so close to the end we are so about to get in that arc that it is worth a while for me to attempt again even though i've already exposited on before i've already expanded i've already blew up i've already blown up this particular section okay uh so therefore i ought not be redundant and repeat myself but you know we do it anyway and i did make mention of the fact that my redundancy and my repetitiveness is uh is 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 largely for those that th those few remnant that will listen and enter the ark and those few remnant that will listen and enter the ark are will have sorry not made it into the tribulation if they had not repented beforehand not all of them but there's uh, this is who i'm trying to speak to right now right the segment that i communicated um in that video where i was speaking about what's coming in the tribulation was of basically a nebuchadnezzar type batch of people uh who some like be, okay before i even speak about their nebuchadnezzar disposition people who were getting finally now into the point because i can meander i apologize people who were right nebuchadnezzar was not a professing christian but god is going to judge some of them and by some i mean a negligible remnant through the nebuchadnezzar judgment but the rest of them it's going to be the finality of their person listen okay uh People who profess Jesus Christ, who profess Christ, who are Christians presently, who are not just lukewarm or Laodi or, or, or Sardian. They're, they're not just Laodicean or Sardian or any other of the other churches that have strange issues with them. You know, uh, the only two churches that that are pr uh, uh, that, that that leave God in in pride in pride in proudness are Smyrna and Philadelphia, but Pergamum and Ephesus and Thyatira and Laodicea and Sardis are just not okay, man. Like they've got issues. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So there will be lukewarm, unserious, non sincere wannabe christians walking around just you know galloping like little horsemen of the apocalypse because they're gonna learn how to run in um the tribulation they will exist right and the numbers of them will be bountiful they will account for quite a large percentage of the great revival that will come the other percentage will come from people who didn't know jack about christ and now are like curious and upon being told they will believe because they would rather take that than the narrative that is going to be shared so there will be a, a, a massive chunk of, of human individuals that were insincere about jesus and then booyah it like caught them off guard like you know cookie in the hand in the cookie jar type setup thing but there is a component of these humans these particular individuals on my hand always has just got to be down like i told you guys it's cold so uh i've got an electric blanket and my legs are already warm so i'm just using my legs to warm myself but my hands are nice to gesture with they make this le look less you know yeah you get my point and they'd like a uh, sort of kind of robotic but anyway fine here's the hand anyway yeah okay guys people who are hypocrites don't really like the duplicitous okay they're not really serious with jesus and all that jazz they will enter into the tribulation they will be left behind and that will be their judgment their sorrow i already highlighted that i spoke about it if anything i touched on it even in that 144 one hour 44 minute video okay but there is a special body of wannabe christians that i am today 
trying to prophesy over concerning what is coming that is unique because of what under heaven would be their general demeanor and disposition and how the Lord intends to deal with them is not quite like how the Lord will deal with the, La the, the Laodiceans, the Sardians, the Pergamamians, the, the no, not Smyrnians, not Philadelphians, but the Ephes Ephesians, the uh, Thyatirans. Uh, yeah, they're not even going to be given. This is their letter to the church. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. This here is the, the letter to the church that these people are getting. And they're not going to get another one. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're not going to get any other letter to the church other than the existing ones that are in the Bible and the ones that come from those who can prophesy over them to repent. They are making very much like AKA warned months in advance that you're going to die. And then the dude just ignores and then dies anyway. Right. These are people that I dreamt about y'all. And what I saw was just devastating. Let us have a conversation about the state of the nations, the world of Christians in the world in the last days. They are described in 2 Thessalonians 2 as the 2 Thessalonians 2 from verse 9. Okay, I will read. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing. For those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. So these were people who were close to the truth. They had information. They had the gospel. We're not speaking about ignoramuses that have not even seen a single, you know, letter of the Lord's word. We're speaking about people that are always buried in this book, y'all. Because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And y'all, <laughs> I had a dream of this, y'all. And <laughs> people, y'all need me to get it. I just, I, like, if you're busy sitting outside of Christian ministries and casting spells, like, <laughs> yo, eh, oof. Y'all are in trouble. Anyway, in 2 Timothy, sorry, in 1 Timothy 4, it is written, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, so right about now, okay, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars, whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from food, abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. Second Timothy, sorry, first Timothy, four that is letting you guys know that there's going to be people who are going to depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons now let us go to second timothy now for as well so also second timothy four also four but this time the second of the timothys all right we know that second timothy three is about the perilousness of the last days and we have been discussing that all of these days but now we're speaking of second timothy four okay and it is written therein. Okay. I charge you. Not all of it. I'm not going to read all of it. Okay. Just to put that out there. I'm only going to read up to where I feel as if though that's where I need to stop. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Who is the judge of all the earth. Will do right. Anyway. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Who is to judge the living and the dead. And by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Okay. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For operative like verse now, right? That I'm trying to get to. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. 
and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths as for you be always sober as for you always be sober-minded endure suffering do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry okay that's where i shall end so essentially there is a time that we have arrived at now that has been described in the scriptures where it is that people are going to hate the truth they're going to hate what the bible has to say about what's right and what's wrong what's truth and what's false and they are, as a result of this exorbitant hatred of God's word, going to come up with their own little ideas as to what it means to be a Christian. They will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And like it is written in 2 Timothy 3, they will be always therefore learning and never coming to a knowledge of truth, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. These people, the Lord awards some of them amnesty, and that they're going to be left behind and realize that my oh my, how mistaken I was. Let he who has an ear hear what the Spirit says to the churches. They will either be a Pergamalmian or an Ephesian or a not Smyrnian man, Thyatiran or a Laodicean or a Sardian, right? They will be left behind and the Lord will make it clear as to what's going on over there. Why were you left? Okay. And they will then have to get their act together. And if they don't, they will perish in the tribulation. That's what's good. These human individuals are not born again. They were never saved. They were just dottering about around the perimeter of the gates of heaven, but never really entered in. And God will award some of them an olive branch to do better because the rapture will be their grace. That is just how benevolent God is and how redemptive and evangelistic he is and how sick and chancy he is. He gives you that shocking event to make you see that straighten up and fly, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but there is a component of these human individuals that the Lord showed me, I guess, buy skelem sabo. He is not buying their skelem. I don't even know what skelem means. Whatever they're selling, he's not buying it. These are people who, listen up you guys, all right? From the moment a human individual enters this earth, they are allotted grace by the duration of time that their lives will linger on the earth to essentially ultimately give themselves over to the Lord. There are people, however, okay, you guys, that especially and quite prolifically and really very exquisitely irritate God. There are people who get to him more than others. That's the thing. God is not a respecter of persons. All sin is the same. But the scriptures make it clear that there are categories of human individuals whose winepress of the wrath of God, who contribute to the winepress of the wrath of God at hasty speeds in comparison to the rest of the human race it is not about the fact that the lord respects or adores or favors other of the human race more it's that these people are the bane of what he is trying to do or is doing not god is not trying to do anything he's doing it because he's god okay the lord has um what you call this no other prerogative that he's actively working on right here other than to gather for himself a people for his own possession that is literally the only thing he's doing he is gathering for himself a people for his own possession and that whole plan of salvation for god to have a people to worship him for all of eternity is being fulfilled through the ages and the human race as we are living and the lord has set apart everything for that purpose including the wicked for the day of trouble so even the raising up of satan to make war with the human race even the demons that are all up in your grill even the dark forces the dark people those who have worshipped the kingdom of darkness who work for the kingdom of darkness yeah they are set apart wicked for the day of trouble judas had a job to do from eternity past he had to betray the messiah that he might be killed for us all who would embrace the truth that's what's good his condemnation was written about long ago he is sovereign that way and that whole judas thing that he did was again a plan of redemption it was in the line it was in the assembly line to ultimately produce what would be the car of our salvation do you understand what i'm saying mm. so Essentially, what I'm trying to now ultimately culminate towards in having this discussion is that there are certain people that irritate God more than others precisely because of their vehement works in trying to block this particular thing. People who go out of their way in all of their ignorance to prevent the gospel from being proliferated, to prevent God's people from amassing to himself, or to prevent God's people from evangelizing other of the earth that they might enter the kingdom of heaven 
in and of themselves they've been called to do a better thing like respond respond to the gospel do better and if you don't want to do better get out then hop like a kangaroo on a beach ball a kamikaze beach ball because it's suicidal and while you're on that beach ball roll down the hill like a can being kicked by a child playing a game and never be seen again but stick around if after you get given the gospel only for the sole purpose of ascertaining that it no longer gets proliferated or that the individual that is out here speaking these things must just capitulate to whatever gangstrosity you are engaged in that's problematic the scriptures support what i'm saying it is written in god's word that okay so the, the the issues with these people are that they are perpetually trying to block the gospel and are also invested feverishly in causing the compromise of gospel servants so if we are already born again they are just trying to poke and prod away at our chastity some of these licentious men and colorful agenda females yeah they are either trying to poke and prod away at our piety in christ our sanctified nature our holiness be holy for i am holy there is a holiness without which no one will see god that saith god's word and god therefore mm. they're always trying to poke and prod away at that or they are always trying to ascertain that we can't get to some people they are always trying to make sure that don't nobody else hear it they are always trying to make sure that nothing of the proliferation or promulgation of god's kingdom is maintained <sighs> Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do, but up to what point will forgiveness continue to reign in these streets? The Lord awards grace to a certain height, y'all. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. And if at all that grace is disregarded, people then eventually die in their sins or they get handed over to a reprobate mind to live the remaining 20 years of their lives only to inevitably go to hell and they will inevitably reject every gospel message. Um, and... So therefore they then get finished off and what have you the lord gives everybody grace and if at all people don't respond appropriately like i said time runs out the hour law sand is actually being depleted mm. but there are people who catalyze that process they expedite it and god can't stand them the most and it is the ones who not only block the proliferation of the gospel but also do everything in their power to cause saints of the living god to sin okay uh or at least attempt to those who are always working to the nail in this um, agenda. It is written in God's word that it would be better if a millstone were tied around the neck of an individual that causes any of these little ones of God to sin. And then that person be thrown into the ocean with that millstone around their neck. It is better to have a If anybody causes any of these little ones of mine to sin, it'll be better if a millstone were tied around their necks and for them to be thrown in the ocean then for them to, I guess, face God in the judgment, that's what's implied. Mm. These children, God is speaking about actual children at the time. Christ was speaking about actual children, you know, little individuals, these toddlers. Yeah, he was speaking about children. But he did make it clear that the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. He said that the kingdom of heaven belongs to children or childlike people. Children are malleable. They are forgiving, very uh, plastic, you know what I mean? In the sense that you can mend them and bend them easily. They are teachable and this is the only kind of individual that the kingdom of heaven belongs to because even though we are just like children not sinful not, we, we are not without sin but we are easily teachable and we don't bear grudges we forgive easily yeah the kingdom of heaven belongs to people who've got the demeanor of a child when the bible says that there is a holiness without which no one will see god that holiness is essentially a child likeness okay so when the bible says that if anybody when christ was speaking about if anybody causes any of these little ones of mine to sin he was not only speaking about actual physical children so people are in danger for causing children to go astray woe to you america for causing kids to change genders and everything and then infiltrating that rubbish into the world woe to you disney for teaching children witchcraft woe etc you get my point so the lord is speaking indeed to um the lack of uh, right upbringing of children as they are in their childlike state but it's also very um it's also applicable in its very metaphoric sense too uh in that he's speaking to christians those who get redeemed those who get born again and now that we are born again we are given the holy spirit of god to conquer all these nasty things that come part and parcel of our character as we get older the tendency towards holding grudges the tendency towards um 
man manipulativeness, uh, lacking in innocence, you know, plotting, scheming, all that, whatever it is that we come with packaged. The Holy Spirit enables us to put to death the deeds of the body. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we become like children. So that scripture speaks to the comprom the cause the causing of the compromise of children's piety and also the causing of the compromise of Christian piety. It'll be a better it'll be it'll be better sorry for you to have a millstone tied around the neck than for you and be thrown in the ocean than for you to have to face god ultimately if you are an individual that has participated in the mutiny against the church and some kids do you understand what i'm saying mm. well i got a dream with the lord showing me just what under heaven those who with the millstone tied around the neck are like i already told you guys in one of my other videos that my ex-boyfriend i had a dream of him of arriving in eternal condemnation with a stone that was chained by like chains you know steel metal chains whatever and it was around his body not so much around his neck and he was thrown into the flames of hell with this weighing him down and ultimately crashing him to the bottom and my prayer was that upon listening to that video and therefore getting nicely scared and chaskrikt that he would repent because you know the lord will always give you grace before he knocks you out he will always give you grace before he knocks you out i also got a dream where i was shown my 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 ex-boyfriend passing away on like the date of the rapture so he's on a great deal of thin ice if he doesn't repent that's all i gotta say right of that dude but he is among the participants in the mutiny against my life but he was never a devout christian a professing christian an insistent christian he was never somebody that was walking these streets as um, do you understand what i'm saying yeah well those who are the biggest pet peeve to god are those who cause christians to sin and those who block the gospel but there is another pet peeve that god has and it is false discipleship it is false christianity it is false shepherd shepherdhood it is false evangelistichood false prophethood yo if you are claiming to be a child of god and you just ain't and you are knowingly committing atrocities against the body of Christ, you are in a special category on your own. So it's bad enough that those who try to cause Christians to sin are abhorred by God. But if they're just random, full, 100% thoroughbred, unadulterated witches, they're in a far better position than if at all they are professing Christians and not just a hard knock, unadulterated Satanist who's making the lives of Christians a living nightmare. So the combination of profession of Christianity with attempt to block the gospel. Ah, y'all. That is the pin drop in the ocean, the cherry on top. That is the pinnacle, the tip of Mount Everest. Okay. Of heinous human that can never dwell on the earth. That is the be all and end all of the pinnacle of heinous soul that God can ever gaze upon on the planet chilling as a christian while destroying christianity hey y'all <laughs> i had some yeah so basically it is about the departing so i already read from second thessalonians 2 refuse to love the truth take pleasure in unrighteousness the lord leaves them in this state sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So they're false Christians. They don't want to believe the truth at all. But then over and above it, they out here making like Janice and Jambres worming their way into the lives of weak-willed women burdened with passions and various sins. They out here actively trying to claim that, hey, I'm in Zalani too, girl. Like, I love the Lord. Shut up. When the dude is actually involved in sorcery, the intention of which is to listen to this, cause a Christian to fornicate, cause a Christian woman to sin by being unequally yoked with an unbeliever and then partaking in sexual acts outside of marriage. So you are causing them to sin. And then over and above it, because their walk now is all compromised because you're in their silly, your silly person in their lives. Mm, yeah, they will highly unlikely continue with the gospel. How can I uh, explain this further? There is this one dude from back in the day. And you know, I, I don't even know where he's at, y'all. Like now, I wish I could find him. But there is this guy when I was newly saved. Like brand spanking new saved. I was still working and everything. There is this dude on YouTube that I found. Um, and he was he was very 
creative, you know, he was into poetry, gospel poetry and rap and he was sound and he was so excited for Jesus and he was celibate and chaste. He was a young man with fever for God, with fever for Christ. Okay. And this dude, I followed his, his content and I loved his work and I just kept watching him over and over and over again. Every single day when I got home, I would watch anything new that he would upload, um, on, on, online. And then he just disappeared. He just disappeared. He disappeared. On, on YouTube, y'all. My brother Aja disappeared on YouTube. And I was like, how is this guy? It's been a minute, you know? Like, I used to watch him, like, anally. Like, every day, almost like tuning in to your favorite television show. And he just stopped uploading. And, he, like, he had just disappeared. Uh, fine, so he was gone. And months progressed with him being gone. I believe even a year and a half progressed with him being gone. And I was just like, okay, he's gone, whatever. But because I followed him and I was... I was I wasn't subscribed. I I only started subscribing to people recently because I realized how important it was thanks to my own struggle with that. But I certainly was watching. I wasn't subscribing or liking, but he was definitely somebody I was always watching. Anyway, whatever. So obviously, when then this dude would upload a video, when then he would upload a video, I would uh, what you might call this thing. I would get a recommendation from YouTube because. I, I, like I said, I used to consume him daily or weekly, however frequently he would upload his content. So one day I'm out here in these YouTube streets and then boom, his video is up. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, I get all excited. I click on it uh, and he's explaining why he's been gone for like a year, year and a half. And you know why? He got stealthily uh, wormed into the life of by some Jezebelian females and burdened him with so much lust that he fornicated. He fornicated. The dude ended up in fornication because he allowed himself to be immersed around like the women that he the, the, he said the woman that, that that caused him to fornicate was in the church. She was around as a Christian and like I was just spazzing over him, crushing and whatnot, attractive and all that jazz. And ultimately he fornicated with her. Right. Yeah. So someone that was a professing Christian caused a Christian to sin and as a result of causing that dude to sin he couldn't in his right conscience he couldn't with his conscience intact come to youtube and encourage us now his conscience was too shattered he, he his guilt was so exorbitant that he felt like a hypocrite you see lovely that that's 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 that's, that's biblical christianity right there a broken and a contrite spirit god will not despise psalm 51 when you see what you've done you sorrow over your sins you don't just burp like dietrich hadron had on aren't you having a child out of wedlock woman is obviously pregnant you're not married to her and then you go and you preach on sundays like a true christian if they go and they slip like that and they impregnate a woman they will disappear from ministry they will do the irresponsible thing they will realize that they are no longer above reproach and so fit to teach they will leave and that dude left for a whole year and a half he was gone and when he came back he confessed that he had fornicated and that it cost him ministry he, he just couldn't with a clear conscience he could not return to ministry because then he would be obviously lying. He would, he was a fornicator. So he had to heal for a season first before returning back to us. I don't know what since happened to him. He's probably still on YouTube. I don't know. Uh, cause a lot of trash happened to my life. I fell apart. And so I stopped watching a whole bunch of stuff. And now YouTube is recommending different stuff to me. I would know if I saw him online that that's the guy. Right. Uh, but I, I just haven't seen him in like a very long time. I forgot his name. I, I, the other day I wished I could have actually remembered who his name was, but that dude, uh, fornicated and yeah. So then the gospel message was uh, blocked. Here it is that I was so encouraged by him in the very, uh, fundamental or rudimentary stages of my own redemption. So he was essentially contributing to my discipleship and what work he was starting to build in me stopped all of a sudden. He abandoned the project and left me somewhat high and dry. Of course, I found other people to help me along, but he was among those who built my faith stronger and he fell apart. So when that man disappears from the internet, you you are out to taking one more servant from the harvest. And it is written from, yeah, it is written in God's word that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So when a Christian that is psyched for Christ, okay, is out here running these streets, hopping up and down them like a kangaroo because he's excited, preaching and evangelizing and going to the malls even and telling people about Jesus. When you make that dude disappear, when there's like a tumbleweed in the in the in the desert because he's so guilty like david that he's like oh search me oh god and know my heart and see if there's any wicked way in here yeah and he therefore disappears from ministry for two years that is an abomination to god 
because the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. We need that guy. We need that girl. We need these people. There aren't enough of us, do you understand? That's what I'm getting at. The scriptures make it clear that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So when you knock out a laborer, even for a season, <laughs> you are eradicating the proliferation of the gospel, which is one of God's pet peeves, like I said. He's doing no other thing here than gathering for himself a people for his own possession. The whole earth exists for that whole purpose, which is why the world comes to an end when there's a great apostasy. Because what's the point anymore? Because God is gathering for himself a people, and if people don't want to worship him, you get to die. You don't get to say to the potter as pottery, what have you done? He will crush you to smithereens. It's that literally basic. Mm. Okay, very well. So here it is that a brother disappeared from the internet for a year and a half, evidencing what in the world is the horrific influence of unequal yoking or of people that rock up and cause a Christian to compromise. Yeah, somebody ministry Aja in these streets rolling around a tumbleweed in it. And those who were encouraged by that person, high and dry. And others might even very potentially fall away because they were holding on to just this one person. There are people who get super duper obsessed with just one Christian because they like them so much. And when they disappear, these people also kind of, you know, gravitate into outer space or something. Mm. Yeah, y'all don't understand what under heaven you are doing. So the insistence on licking the side, the cheek of a Christian lady because you are sexually attracted to her and you go back to the drawing board slapping her with all different kinds of corovela spells trying to kiss her neck, trying to kiss his neck, trying to yeah, eba to If at all you succeed, just as some females succeeded to do that to my brother uh, from long ago that I met, brother from another mother, mm, yeah, uh, if you succeed to do that, that Christian will have to face God, they will have to repent they will face judgment for their sins, for no sin will be left unpunished, but it'll be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the ocean than for you to face God and the judgment because you caused a saint to sin. You are written about expressly in the scriptures as in danger. Khafar ingozi. You are in danger. Do you understand? And if you don't repent from having been that rando, in other words, if you don't make like Saul and root Damascus and become the chief of sinners that's now the biggest and baddest Gentile evangelist in the game, the Apostle Paul, if you don't make yourself like Paul after having been an afflictor of the church, yo, but I can't deal. I can't deal. And so I don't really know why you're dealing. Mm. Your condemnation is so exquisite. It, it is so, so, so incredibly exquisite. Y'all need to make like Saul and Ruth Damascus, do you understand? Be met with Christ, boo, in the middle there. Shine, blind you, get born again. Have your name be changed from Tryphena to Josephine, like proper. Because Tryphena's not going to kick it. It's not going to, she's not going to cut it anymore. Saul became Paul. Y'all need to go from Tryphena to Josephine. That, that's what needs to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if you don't get there before, from what the Lord showed me, the tribulation starts. You're done for. You're done for. Hey guys, the dream that I had was so exquisite. Yeah, anyway, that was the one dude from YouTube. There's also another chick this time around. I know her name, right? Uh, on YouTube, her name is Romo10, right? Romo10. She was so severely persecuted in the office building where she worked that she disappeared from YouTube for a year. A year. And when she came back, she was all timid and scared to continue to prophesy. She lost her job. As a result of her channel on YouTube, they accused her of all different kinds of things that she did not do. And when she came back to YouTube a year later explaining to us all what happened, she had not only, listen to this right, not only disappeared for a year, but like weeks before returning, she privatized every last video that she ever uploaded. She, pri like we can't go back to that content anymore. She essentially closed the floodgates open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain yeah that chick instead of opening the floodgates of heaven she shut the faucet or the tap closed Hebatum. girl how you gonna go and 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 privatize your whole youtube because of persecution except i've also done that before my main channel on youtube the work that I uploaded from the first time I started a YouTube channel, the first first time, as in in 2014, when I was newly kicked out of my employment. I think my YouTube channel started in 2015, early in the next year. Everything that I uploaded there almost daily. I went back into it, guys, it's thousands of videos and I privatized them because I was ashamed of my sorrow. 
how much pain I was in. It was the very new beginning stages of my persecution and I was just sharing this every single day with barely anybody watching me, lots of witchcraft operating and I, I have privatized it. I have not deleted the videos. The intention was to one day when I'm all monetized, maybe go back into that old content and you know listen to some of it and take clips of it and say hi guys look at what I could where I came from this is a video that I did in 2000 and like yeah and yeah, whatnot yo guys mm. I privatized all that work because I didn't want people seeing all that sorrow going back down 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 into my youtube channel I told myself I'm gonna turn a new leaf and so I started from scratch and not only right did I privatize all my videos but the thing that made me disappear I also I disappeared for two years on the internet and even though I did not disappear because of sin I disappeared because of persecution I disappeared because of persecution for two years I was not uploading on YouTube but all my videos were publicly available as soon as I came back I privatized everything for of all those years that I had suffered and I started again with a different tone because I wanted to impress people or I wanted them to receive me better not have to deal with such a bereaved saint mm. my YouTube channel has been around since 2015 guys it's 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 entirely irresponsible that I am sitting on just mere thousands of subscribers for the amount of time that I've been here. It's almost 10 years that I've been on YouTube, y'all. And yet, I, I haven't even monetized. That's how much witchcraft has been all up in that space. And that's how much attempt to block the gospel, the misappropriation of uh, the understanding of God by, by those who belong to the Kemen darkness has achieved. Yeah, I disappeared for two years because I was severely persecuted by some dude who just would not stop slapping me with a whole bunch of spells among the spells of which was kill yourself, die, kill yourself, die. He tried to kill me so badly, that dude, that the Lord to rescue me from what under heaven was going on over there had to take me offline. And for two years I was underground and I was somewhat okay. And after coming back, ah, the barrage was back. But this time, while the original strategy was flight, the adrenaline response was flight. This time around, it's fight. Now I'm fighting. So I understand why how Romo 10 got there. <laughs> Privatizing every video, even though people were, were very, very edified by it. And unlike me, where I had barely any subscribers, barely any views, because I'm living in this witchy continent called Africa, Romo, who is in Germany, okay, uh, had like a handsome number of subscribers, I think like 18,000 or something. And she, she blinded all of them. She blinded all of us. She blinded, she does prophetic uh, videos. Um, uh, very end times focused dreams and visions and all that jazz. She, she, she literally put blinkers on all of our eyes and was like, nah, ain't nobody gonna see this anymore. Literally, what, what basically Romo did was throw out the baby with the bathwater. The eyes that were watching her that caused persecution caused her to blind everyone that was rather edified by her content she put bandages on her open wounds by blinding all of us mm -hmm. instead of like maybe i don't know what what she could have done but you know i'd like i get where she's coming from i still have hundreds of videos privatized because i didn't i don't want people seeing all that pain all that sorrow when i was all by myself living by myself struggling emaciated how skinny i was the videos i uploaded where i was so so emaciated like i just didn't want people seeing that <laughs> yo who did that not only that random buffoon that tried to kill me, but a whole bunch of witches that contributed to the loss of my career, contributed to the loss of uh, respect, dignity, contributed to my, um, my, what do you call this? My sorrow at the hands of my family, like a loss of witchcraft. My family in and of themselves had a lot to do with that, right? So they're not innocent, but there was a lot of, um, sowing of discord using witchcraft and God despises those things. Those who sow discord between brothers, <laughs> Everton, these things God considers them an abomination. It is written in God's word in the book of the Proverbs. And among them is a man who sows discord between brothers. So those of y'all who have tried to come at me using my family <laughs> and you call yourselves Christian. Yes, like, yes, guys, you're in trouble using my family. Like, I just recently had a dream about some chick that I used to work with at MTN that then moved out of the company. But then she was a Sunday school teacher at Grace. And that's where I later on found her. Yeah, she and some other chick from primary school half colored half black that bewitched me from seeing me from fa on facebook recently doing spells against me to wreak havoc in my life using my family using my family both these women cast spells on me to essentially finish me off through my mean family that is sowing of discord between brothers and these things god considers it an abomination he despises that but the one in particular that was a sunday school teacher at grace was like i said that she was she's a professing christian she's a professing christian and she is trying to stop my ministry so anyway yeah romo 10 i understand why she got where she got but she was silenced for a year and she came back 
recently, just a couple of months ago, but like she stopped uploading Prophecy. Romo Ten stopped uploading Prophecy because that's what got her persecuted. And Prophecy concerning the last days in particular. This is what it's written in God's word. Do not despise prophesyings. Because her prophesyings were despised. The reason why I left onto Romo 10 was because some of the videos that she uploaded came to pass. And so I followed her. I followed her. With, with, like, with eerie accuracy. So God obviously is speaking through that chick. <laughs> but she's gone. She's gone now, right? And she's still gone. Like, yeah, she came back and said that she's no longer going to be sharing prophecies. She literally told all of us on YouTube that she's no longer going to be sharing prophecy. Hey, girl, how are you going to allow yourself to be made mum by these randos? But you know what? I can't judge because now I'm me. I was put underground and made mum. And when I came back, I, in shame, privatized a whole bunch of my old videos so people wouldn't have to see all that sorrow. Yeah. So we are, I'm not, she's not fluffy or namby pamby in being the way that she is. She is reacting in a human way, the way that Peter did. When you so abuse or persecute a Christian, sometimes they run away. Sometimes they flee from essentially maintaining their stand. It's written in God's word that if you deny him before the father, before men, he will deny you before the father. But every so often Christians walk in a spirit of denial, but for a season and then they return like Peter. Denied Christ three times before the rooster crowed. Kukuru, but then he turned around and strengthened his brethren. Peter did it. Peter did it. And Peter was walking with Jesus. So if Peter could flounder that way, albeit having walked with the Messiah, how much more will we flounder as Christians who will seasonally be like, I'm not doing this. I can't. I'm not prophesying anymore because look at the amount of persecution that is on my life. But they always come back and turn around and strengthen their brothers. So I've been praying for Romo to come back. She came back and said she's not going to prophesy anymore. Her videos views plunged because people were drawn to her precisely because they loved prophesying. And when then she stopped, they were like, I'm not just going to listen to you speak about the birds and how they are flying outside and what you think that it means spiritually, girl. Like you have a gift, like use it. Uh, because of observing how low her views are now on YouTube, she's been discouraged again and she's not back on YouTube. My prayer is that since Satan sought to sift her like wheat, uh, and so she denied Christ three times, like my prayer is that she will turn around and strengthen her brothers because we are close now, like Peter. She must strengthen us now the way that Peter did. We are close to the end and she's got work to do. She got a job, baby. She's got work to do. We've all got work to do. We're all being sifted like wheat, but we have got to be maintained in what it is that we have to do. The laborers are plentiful. Sorry, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. She was scared silly. Another person in history that was scared silly and, 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 and ran. Yeah. You know, because people were actually playing chicken with him. And so he ended up being chicken. Martin Luther of the Protestant Reformation at some point made like a chicken and ran. Simon Peter, Satan has sought to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that after you've been tested, you will turn around and strengthen your brothers. Martin Luther, after the papacy wreaked a whole great deal of um, havoc in his life, he agreed to basically retract his proclamations on the rooftop his stipulations his postulations about sola fide sola deo gloria basically the five solas like we are saved by faith grace alone all that jazz like yeah all those other stuff you're adding catholic church please no that ain't the real truth mm. that he was prepared to reverse that because he was put under so much pressure under so much attrition and he, he did for a season but then he came back he came back and knocked something into the door of some it is a syniot of door to whatever i stand corrected knock something on some hey the truth is still the truth now he came back it is he will not be king peter will not be the first to flounder because of persecution neither will he be the last so romo 10 did it i've done it the dude um from from the u.s who was made to to sin and so walked in a psalm 51 contriteness and didn't even come back to ministry that that whole activity that causes like you know what offense it's written in god's word that offenses will come but woe to the man through whom those offenses come so offenses came and the man fornicated offenses came and who is this guy martin luther stopped with his uh, uh, mission offenses came and romo 10 ditched her youtube channel for a whole year offenses came and i ditched my youtube channel for a whole two years Offenses came and I privatized a whole bunch of my content. Offenses came to me. I said, yeah, you get my point, guys. And the Lord is not happy when we are of little faith and we, we shiver about all over the show. But he has compassion on us because he remembers that we are made of dust. And so he prays for us. He's our advocate. He's ever interceding. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings much too deep for us to understand. He is forever standing in the gap, charging his angels concerning us that we might not, that to bear us up in their wings, that we might not strike our feet against stones. So the Lord 
is the one that ins ensures that after we have been tested and essentially, essentially floundered, flopped in our noses broadly, our teeth broken on the floor and our noses bleeding, we will stand up, turn around and strengthen our brothers. So I'm, I'm praying for Romo that she will come back and realize that girl you have a gift like you have to share what god is showing you can't just sit on prophecy like you when when you just keep on fun getting funneled to by god every single day <clears throat> every single night every week whenever he gives you prophecy and, and then you just sit on it girl on that day you are you are disobedient do you know what i'm saying so i'm, I'm prayerful that she will return and continue to tell us what under heaven it is that god is showing her because she obviously has a gift but that whole scary cat chicken game that the world is playing with the body of christ woe to you who is bringing on those offenses and woe to you much further when you are a professing christian and so therefore ought be standing with the gospel of the lord jesus christ anybody that is you know god says in the word so there is this guy i stand created as to who he is but you can go read the acts of the apostles you'll find him there in some way who was it the acts i stand created anyway whatever but somewhere along the way in the new testament the disciples were out here complaining on some no it was definitely not the acts because jesus was still alive all right yeah uh so it's the gospels this dude yeah it's definitely the gospels all right this dude was out here casting out demons casting out demons in the name of jesus get the step and in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and then the disciples come back on some hey there's somebody busy using your power and it's just no what, what is he doing and god was like if at all he is those if he is for us then he is not against us you know if at all he works if he's casting out demons in the name of the kingdom of heaven in the name of jesus then he is for us and so can't possibly be against us something of that nature right he was basically rebuking his disciples saying that he's coming in the name of jesus and so he's not an enmity with us Christ corrected his disciples on some, this here to cast out demons is not exclusively yours. If somebody has believed upon me, they also can cast out demons. So when they were like, no, but why is, why is this dude using your power? Christ was like, he's not against the kingdom, is he? So leave him alone to go and cast out demons. That's what's good. Hallelujah to that man that Archie heard about the name of Jesus and was like, come out in the name of Christ. Like, you know, by faith, he just ran with it. He's like the woman who touched the garment of Jesus and power left him. And he was like, women, your faith has healed you. In other words, you just run with the gospel, even though nobody has evangelized. You just heard it in the mawaro mom, in the wham wham, in the sky. And you just go and you cast out demons and then people come and complain against you. And Christ is like, he's for us. So he's not against us. Leave him alone to keep casting out demons. There's too many of them to go around anyway. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So let him be a laborer. And it, 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 it again is also congruent with God's word when he says that a kingdom divided cannot stand. So that man was of our kingdom. So therefore we can't fight him. Uh, type establishment thing. Yeah. So uh, similarly to then with that particular uh, story uh, if at all you are actively blocking the gospel mission you are trying to put demons in a person instead of cast them out you are against us you are not of the kingdom you are not doing what that gentleman was doing in the bible who christ embraced endorsed the lord endorsed his demon casting out um exploits because he was off the kingdom of heaven seeing as he couldn't have possibly been against it so when you are doing the opposite then of course necessarily must the opposite then also imply that if you are antagonizing any single christian even in the slightest you are not of the kingdom of heaven by this men will know you're my disciples love one another love one another you cannot hate a christian and actively try to block what a christian is doing in the spirit of jealousy and be of the kingdom of heaven in the last days there's all these crazy things going on in circuses otherwise known as wannabe churches yeah where it is that Pastors are competing for parishioners with each other to see whether or not my church is bigger than yours. My church is so much bigger than yours. They are just singing stupid little childish, childish songs like those to a point of murder. In South Africa, there was a pastor that was murdered because some other co, not co-pastor, but pastor in a nearby church was upset that all of his parishioners were going to his church. They were moving to his church. And so he went inside that church while a sermon was being preached and he shot that pastor dead. He shot that pastor dead. This happened in South Africa like last year. Yeah. Kingdom divided cannot stand. So you are not a child of God when you are upset that somebody else is reaching 10 more disciples than you. You are not a child of God. You are absolutely upset to the Lulu Lulu. Absolutely not a child of the living God when you cannot stand the ministry of another 
Christian, when you are actively blocking the work of another Christian, when you are competing with another Christian for stupid stuff to a point of sabotage. I mean, jealousy will always exist in the bones of people. Some Christians might covet or envy each other because of you've got more subscribers than me, etc. But actively sabotage, going out of your way to make sure that a person does not listen to Alan Parr, a person does not listen to Paul Washer, a person does not listen to Melissa Doherty. A person does not let you get my point uh, to go out of your way to do that i'm sorry on that day how i you can't let's forget it you are not a christian not even in the slightest when you actively sabotage the gospel from being proliferated you are working for yourself you have made the gospel a career and just like any other worldly career there are only so many slots <laughs> in this industry and you gotta work like a dog to get in one of them and so you will knock anyone out the way that is threatening your progression up the corporate ladder or whatever. They treat the gospel that way. And when you don't see it as, I say the more the merrier, and sets another plate. If you don't see it as the more the merrier, you are not a child of the living God because there is no room for that level of feverish competition to a point of sabotage in the body of Christ, blocking therefore the gospel from being proliferated. Christians ought love each other's works and everybody in the kingdom of heaven must celebrate when a sinner repents whether or not that sinner came around and did a better thing because of this guy and not the other like for instance my family members are crazy lost do you understand what I'm saying and I have been seeking the Lord's face to rescue them if not through me through anybody else because seeing as people tend to underestimate people from their own backyard prophet has no honor in his own hometown how much more dishonorable are they or dishonored are they amidst their own family members i then saw the lord's face to essentially convince my little sister through somebody else out there that she looks up to since she doesn't like me very much my 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 my, my, my sister my older sister my mom since they couldn't care less for how i have to deliver this message may they find somebody fascinating out there in the world that they like a whole bunch that isn't christian and then will be inspired to follow them instead of me because they don't like my vantage point my they the prophet has no honor in his own hometown it doesn't matter let somebody else get to them then let somebody else get to them then i've been seeking the lord's face for that you do you understand what i'm saying so therefore for me to envy then covet be jealous 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 dunka, 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 get down jealous down yeah of somebody that succeeds to reach my sister for Christ <laughs> like she's been snatched from the flames she won't have to burn forever anymore and I don't have to have that worry yeah hey, the friend of my f of my family is my friend you know they're saying the enemy of my enemy is, is 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 the enemy of my enemy is my friend well in this instance the friend of my family is my friend the friend of someone that gets born the friend of my born again family is my anyone that can succeed to snatch a soul from the flames hallelujah if you can twist it in a different way bend it in a different shape and it can reach someone in a way that i didn't get to them then hallelujah do you understand what i'm saying that's how the kingdom ought to work. That's how we ought to be. We ought to celebrate it when people are getting born again. And no matter where the angle of born againness came from, we ought to celebrate it. So if you are actively going out of your way to block gospel ministry, because my church is much bigger than yours. My YouTube is bigger than yours. My Facebook is larger than yours. I'm so large a Christian. I'm large, 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 large. And you're not. Whoa offenses will come but woe to you through whom those offenses come when you are competing for adoration in the church to a point of sabotage you are not born again and you are blocking the gospel because the the one extra person that would have been in the room to reach five more people because the harvest is plentiful but the laborers of you are not here now and so those five people are high and dry and some other plan has got to be made for them do you understand what i'm saying mm, that's what's good so to try and cause Christians to sin is to try to block the proliferation of the gospel because if they do sin, they tend to disappear from ministry. Another one that um, gave a testimony briefly in a short about how it is that sin caused him to be away from ministry for a year is David Maypalo, Mapalo from the US. Spoke about how it is that he was being told by the Holy Spirit in, the, in a steamy, passionate moment with a woman, with a chick. And he was told by the Holy Spirit expressly, don't do it. And he went on right ahead and fornicated and he disappeared from ministry for a year. He disappeared for a year. Like that's what happens when you cause Christians to sin, y'all. When you cause believers to sin, 
you can cause them to and uh, david mepelo he he's he goes into malls and everything on the street stands on tables and t talks about jesus that kind of witness when you cause it to just whoop, vacuumed out of society <laughs> guys you have you have taken away a brave young man from society that can even face the popo the cops they get kicked out of malls all the time him and him and his friends they get kicked out of public society on some you're disturbing peace and whatnot and they just keep on sharing the word of god sharing the word of god sharing the word of god just passion for christ do you understand what i'm saying yeah when you kick people like that out from ministry because you made them fornicate whoa they had to ex they had in and of themselves to exercise self-control we have got our own autonomy but when you go out of your way to make us sin and you brittle us with so much passion that we struggle to take that one way out woe to you better if a millstone were tied around your neck and for you to be thrown in the ocean than for you to face god in the judgment do you understand what i'm saying yeah so not only can all that sabotage of christians cause them to sin but it can also just out of fear trip like with peter he didn't nay he did sin by re rejecting christ three times but he it's not like he fornicated it's not like he went he he, he he didn't backslide peter didn't backslide just like romo 10 never backslid just like i never backslid uh, but sometimes it doesn't have to require backsliding for a christian to be silenced all it takes is just a barrage of attacks and they get so exhausted and so overwhelmed that they are like i sorry i need a break i can't in this season i have felt i've been at the precipice of that place and thought to disappear from ministry for maybe like two months and it'll dissipate and god was like you are going to be feeding yourselves to the shark in so doing sharks just carry on keep pushing striving you already went underground you can't go underground again you already had your season of being underground. It's not that time now. Now you must fight. You are not going to fight, fly, flee anymore. You're not going to flee. So now I'm fighting. But just the fact that people got us to a point, get us to a point of downing tools, either because they made us sin or because they freaked us out until we disappeared like Martin Luther, like Peter. Woe to you. Woe to you. You cannot curse those whom God has blessed and you cannot bless those whom God has cursed. And when you are covetous of a saint as a professing Christian, recognize this admonition to you. Cain, sin is crouching at your door and its desire is to have you, but you must master it. Recognize your inclination towards ending up like Cain on that day and then repent. If you don't, you will finish off the job of being Cain and kill Abel. On that day, you are then disqualified from the faith, aren't you? You are a whitewashed tomb. You are, woe to you Pharisees, you teachers of the law. Careful to clean the cup on the outside, but inside it's rotten man's bones. Yeah, uh, but inside it's dirty. You're like whitewashed tombs. You're, you're like, you get my point. Woe, you will be pronounced on you seven woes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, God has a thing about those who cause Christians to sin. Those who cause Christians to freak out, fret and front. Those who block essentially the gospel from being proliferated. And worse off, does he have a, a deep issue with them when they are professing Christians in and of themselves? These people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That saith God's word. The judgment on the righteous branch in the Old Testament that stand created as Ezekiel or Isaiah, one of them books. There you see God's sentiment about false shepherds. False shepherds, false prophets. He cannot stand them. People who come in his name and then blaspheme his name because of all their wickedness, given that they're not coming in his name, he cannot stand them. In the letter to the church of Laodicea, lukewarm people, you are neither hot nor cold. And because you're lukewarm, I would have you that you either be hot or cold. And because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out my mouth. God spits them out. He vomits them. He finds them so disgusting that he vomits them. People who aren't sincere with him, however, talk very much about him. Pet hate, pet peeve. It's a pet peeve. Sardis, you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Pet peeve. You hear the sentiment of John as he is writing the letters in the book of revelation as to how god feels about lukewarm christianity it's bad enough on its own being lukewarm but when then it is coupled with persecution of true saints that's when you're in deep danger so those are y'all who like in second thessalonians 2 appear to have been given a strong delusion turn back because y'all are not going to be okay tomorrow like in second timothy uh, sorry like in yeah, second Th timothy 4 okay do a better thing and stop gathering for yourself a great number of teachers to teach you what your itching ears want to hear. Like in 1 Timothy 4, do a better thing. Evil men, and uh, the, the, like in, in 2 um, Timothy, the Lord also, is it 2, to, uh, 2 Timothy 4, further down, it is spoken of, of evil men and imposters going, uh, who, are, who, are, who are this, 2 Timothy 3. 
they go from bad to worse. It's 2 Timothy 3, further down. God speaks about evil men and imposters who are deceiving and being deceived who just go from bad to worse. Don't let yourself be deceived and be continue to go on and deceiving, going from bad to worse. And like in 1 Timothy 4, do not depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Seize yourself from that. Stop being tossed to and from by, by every wind of doctrine. If you don't want to listen, understand you are typical. You are typical. First Thessalonians is another one that I, I should have read to you guys where the scriptures, it is written there. Mm -mm. It's actually second Thessalonians, but I read further down. Let me read now further up. Let no one deceive you from second Thessalonians three, two, three. So two Thessalonians two, three. Let no one deceive you in any way for that day will not come. So the day of the son of man, the Lord's day, the final bill and booyah, right? Yeah. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of perdition who exalts himself above everything that so that causes that, that uh, I, I guess every so-called god an object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of god proclaiming to be god right the thing that i'm trying to get at here is that that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first this is the english standard version the king james and i believe the new international version says the the the, the great apostasy the great falling away those who leave christianity but they will be claiming to be Christians, some of them. They will not only defect from Christianity outwardly and say, I am, what, what is this word um, that they use now on the internet? Deconstructing Christianity or whatever it is. Yeah, they're not outwardly out here coming and saying, I'm deconstructing my Christian faith. Okay, they are saying, I'm a born again Christian. I love God. I love Jesus. But they are out here putting or, or at least attempting to put demons in people instead of cast them out. So they are against the kingdom of heaven. They are trying to block Christian ministry from going ahead. They're so jealous of their brother Abel um, that they're actively plotting and scheming in strange little corners trying to block their ministry because they're giving a better sacrifice to God. A holy sacrifice that is acceptable in the sight of God. That's what's good. Abel is doing a good job. And God says that, Cain, if you do what is right, will you not be rewarded? Will you not be accepted? And Cain goes on right ahead and kills anyway. These people are actively sabotaging gospel ministry. And that's the reason why the end comes. Don't you see you guys? It comes because God is doing no other thing but gather for himself a people for his own possession. And so if there are successful feats, attempts, endeavors to smother the gospel. If, they, if people truly do prosper to put duct tape over our mouths. What's the point? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if a person does not have a, a, a physical Bible in their possession to get born again individually, uniquely by themselves, they need a street evangelist. They need David Lynn. They need Ray Comfort, Joe Kirby. They need David Mapelow to go in the mall and stand on a table and speak the truth. And so if you are out here causing those people to either fornicate or be so scared to speak that they disappear from ministry for two years, what is the point? Like, there's nothing here else that we are doing other than waiting for the fullness of the Gentiles. So that God can restore the Jews to himself. And if you block the fullness of the Gentiles by silencing gospel servants, making sure that the laborers become even fewer than they already are, it's done for. Okay. Like, you know, it's over. We're going home. There's nothing going on here anymore. Because why keep this going? He is God. He's in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Plus, this is his earth and it's full of his glory. And when you make a decision that his mission to gather for himself a people for his own possession must stop, <laughs> he's going to stop you. He's going to stop you. So the world that is out here trying to deconstruct Christianity, like the whole planet, out here trying to deconstruct Christianity, they're naive. Because upon being handed their reprobate minds on a silver platter, the tribulation is going to commence because there's nothing left to do anymore other than destroy the... basically like flushing out. It's like a fumigation. If the world gets so overrun with unbelievers, with apostate randos that hate the God that made them, he will fumigate it. And then start from scratch. And that's called the righteous reign of Jesus Christ. The millennial reign of Christ. He is going to fumigate. And that is the dream that I got. It was so taxing. It was so taxing. The fumigation. Y'all. Okay. So I already spoke earlier. I told you guys that I'm no longer doing more than one part for my video. So me, I just going to talk. Eh? We're just going to discuss eh, until we have finished whether or not people are comfortable to keep listening to me uh, doesn't matter guys i've got too much edit eh? too much edit for my liking i'm, I'm too exhausted uh, uh, for 24 hours i'm always doing something i'm tired okay so we're gonna keep this in one chunky part i spoke about how it is that uh there is going to be a conglomerate a judgment on people that are like nebuchadnezzar 
in, in, in the last days in that and this judgment is coming to those who were professing Christians that also persecuted the church. So witches, witches that are involved in all this dark practice work against the body of Christ God. You are polytheistic, of course. I mean witches, especially those into ancestral worship, you believe in more than one God. You use all different kinds of deities, you're polytheistic, but within your polytheism is strangely Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> within your polytheism is strangely jesus in other words amidst your plethora of gods there is christ there somewhere like a little wax figurine that you carved out from a candle you have also placed god right next to all your other idols you have placed jesus right next to all of your other idols you worship ancestors a whole bunch of hindu gods a whole bunch of um you know manifestation gods blah blah etc if you can dream it up you you you, you dream it up you you worship a ninja turtle and a smurf but you also worship jesus you are always praying in the name of christ at, at dinner mm. hey in the name of jesus bless this food in the name of jesus help me get a job in the name of jesus bless my pregnancy in the name of jesus oh <gasps> yeah like jesus is a ninja turtle the one that you worship. Jesus is a smurf like the one that you worship. One of the seven dwarfs of, of Snow White. Jesus is that dude too. Worship him. Mm. Placing God right next to all of the worthless idols that he despises when he said thou shalt not hook up a graven image. Anything at all that you're going to worship you should only have one God and one God only. Go check out. 20. Exodus 20. Is it Exodus 20? The Ten Commandments. The law of God is written on your hearts. You ought not have these graven images, but you got them, you got them. And next to what, next to all these other graven images, you've literally created a graven image of Jesus. Whoa, in your false religion, you, you've got this like polytheistic random shrine. One of the little dolls of which kind of looks like Christ. <sighs> Ooh, guys, he will burn them to a crisp, okay? So I, I had a dream some time ago and I told you guys about it of these men like like a whole bunch of Jesuses that were being charged to me Jesuses like they all look like this image online that is drawn of Jesus that I don't even think is Jesus but anyway they all look like that a typical image of Jesus that you see on the internet and they were just in one single neat row and it's like every like they were being charged to me when when I decimate the one when I slice and chop off the head of one another comes another comes hence why I dreamt about some new Gen Z out here trying to like lick my neck just another Jesus more people rocking up trying to be my messiah I'll rescue you, baby. I got your back. Baby, please don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Hey, I've already chosen Jesus. What's up with that? Yeah, these false messiahs flying at you like a boot print because they think they're Bruce Lee. Mm. Another prophecy, Matthew 24. But people despise prophesying. In the last days, there's going to be a whole bunch of false Christs, false messiahs that are going to be spotted all over the show. And when you see them in the wilderness, when they say, there he is, don't go. Don't go. Because of the coming of the Son of Man. Like lightning striking from east to west. That's how you're going to know that's the king of the universe. Everybody at the same time is going to see him across the planet. Do you understand what I'm saying? But there's going to be like a whole plethora of these random wannabe like graven image Jesuses all over these streets. And among those who worship this graven image Jesus are people who mix Christianity with ancestral worship. Christianity with manifestation. Name it and claim it. Ooh! Christianity with meditations of different kinds of, like, you're not meditating on God's word and scripture, but you're meditating on, like, like the mantra, angazi, like, weird stuff like that. People who worship Jesus and, and their lives, their idols, their various, like, their cars, their children, their whatnot. Yebatun, Christ on that day is not really the Jesus that the Christians worship, the true, genuine believers. It's a graven image. It's some carved, like, statue of Christ, like the ones that you find on crosses, which I find abominable. I don't think that thing should be dangled on anybody's um neck. The only thing that should represent Christianity, the symbol, is the cross, the actual cross, but the, act the actual body of Christ on the cross there, that's a graven image. Like God said, we, we, we must not carve anything of that nature. Like, it's problematic. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, anyway, whatever. You, you might as well be worshipping that. You, you, you are worshipping a statue. It's a statue. It's not the real deal. When you are mixing Christ with any other rando stuff, it's not the real Christ you're worshipping. It's some other manufactured version belonging to the kingdom of darkness. And there's more of them where they came from because they keep on popping out all over the show like popcorn and a pot. They just keep popping out. And so you're going to be all consumed with 
various sightings of false messiahs until you are spinning on the spot like Itopo and then you will plunge into the eternal lake of fire where the worm dieth not and in that place there, um, there, there, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity and the smoke of your torment will rise forever and the worm does not die like all that jazz you, you're gonna find yourself in that space mm. because of your little graven image of Christ you cannot be a witch and be a Christian you cannot be an unrepentant rando fornicator that never ever leaves his pornography his masturbation or her little secret affair with whatever on the side and still be a Christian. You you can't have two masters. You will either love the one or hate the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. Is it mammon? You can't serve God and money. You can't serve God and, and sorcery. You can't serve God and your jealousy. You can't serve God and your ambition. You can't serve, you can't. Okay, you can't. There is no one who doesn't sin. Christians also sin. But there is a marked difference in a consecrated pious believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and their struggle with sin versus somebody that's just running with it. Rolling with the homies. Like sin is your homie. Mm. There are people who just glide in it. Every so often when you get frustrated with a job interview process, you just go see a sangoma instead of trust God. And if the Lord does not give you that job, you recognize that it was not his will. Yeah, those of you who just can't take God's will in your stride and then you dabble with sorcery as a result of frustration with God. Honey, you cannot serve God and money. You can't serve God and a job interview or a job successfully interviewed into. You cannot serve God and all of these things. So it is these randos that I dreamt about in a most severely devastated position and i was like shame my oh my how shameful this is for these randos i feel sorry for you okay i feel sorry not only are these people unbelievers who claim to be believers but they also thanks to their cane like disposition persecuted the church so all of you sangomas all of you witches all of y'all taking our spells against christians to block them from getting married but you're always in rhema church every sunday my god is able lift him up he defeated the grave i am a total zalwani but then on wednesday evening you're inside the hut of a sangoma uvuma inhaling impepo and everything you are lost you again even that little session at the sangomas is in order to ascertain that the other lady next to you at church who was also like he defeated the grave praise the lord my god is able yeah you were blocking her marriage right next to you in the pew at church you were blocking her job promotion right next to you right in front of you opposite you at bible study you were blocking her pregnancy on wednesday night at the sango by like hey the two of y'all in church together wheat among tears you can not block the gospel and be a gospel servant you don't get to have your bread buttered on both sides and the judgment that the lord has pronounced on you witches seeing as we are going home people that keep on coming against the body of christ and those of y'all that are trying to sexually harass a christian your attempts are heinous they will fail but even if they were to succeed, which they will not, understand that that prosperity in causing a Christian to stumble, <laughs> end of you, your undoing it is, your finality. And I had a dream of that finality in this dream, guys. So before I get into the dream, I'm not going to be here much longer. The dream is going to be brief because it was a, a short little snippet. I had to speak at length right now to culminate to this particular juncture. But I did speak in that other video where I was speaking about the end of the end of the end. Mm -hmm. I let you guys know that there's going to be Christians who are professing Christ, also persecuting the church, that God is going to hold so dear to his heart that he will spare a remnant of them. But it's only going to be a remnant to endure the tribulation, but he will not give them an opportunity to repent at the rapture so that they do not attend the wedding supper of the Lamb. And so that they don't get an incorruptible body. At the second coming of Jesus Christ, they will be unbelieving. The only people that get incorruptible bodies are those who will have believed throughout the tribulation. Up to, but excluding the second coming. They get caught up. The, from the four winds, God calls them up. And so when they come down, they are ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years in incorruptible bodies. So they never age. They basically are in forever mode now. Mm. The Lord is going to judge one component of these randos that have been chosen by him from eternity past he has loved them and so he won't let them perish but they're a remnant those who are his pet peeve essentially souls on the road to damascus they are his pet peeve but they are they are chosen pet peevers they are chosen to endure 
a thorn in their flesh, a messenger from Satan, so that they will not be conceited, given that they were so prolific in persecuting the body of Christ, and now they've been chosen to be, to inherit eternal life. The Lord won't let them die in the tribulation, in their sins. He will survive them. But whatever scars they've got, whatever amputations they have as a result of the tribulation, they will have to live out the rest of their days, aging in front of saints that have received incorruptible bodies and that's their judgment. I already spoke about that in one of my videos. It, it, they're going to repent at the second coming of Christ. But how is God going to make sure they don't repent? They're going to be like Nebuchadnezzar. They're going to eat grass for seven years. He's going to make them mentally ill. He's going to make it impossible for them to turn their faces to God. He's not. As soon as the rapture happens, that's when they're going to lose their minds. As soon as it happens, they will flee into the wilderness and eat grass for seven years. Literally being beasts like Nebuchadnezzar. But at the second coming of Christ, just like Nebuchadnezzar, they will say, the nations of this world are accounted as nothing before Emmanuel. No one can say to him, what have you done? And he will therefore praise God instead of blaspheme. Because in the run up to, he was bashing his chest on a mountaintop like King Kong saying, I've arrived him, him. And then he was made a beast for seven whole years. That whole Nebuchadnezzar depiction, the Lord showed me there's going to be people who are made like that at the rapture. And because of how much they will be like beasts, they will be able to survive forests and jungles that are so far out in terms of radar, radius from the Antichrist systems. I already spoke about how it is that he's not omniscient and neither can he successfully hook up technology to get to every crack and crevice of the earth. They will live in caves far away from being found like beasts and eat rodents and all that stuff. For seven years, they will be that thing and incomprehensible in all, like uh, their, their, their words in uh, again illegible like like a writing you get my point uh, like unable to understand what's coming out of their mouth they will just be zombies essentially just walking around but then the second coming of christ they will snap out of it they will see the son of man coming with all of his holy ones and they will repent at that stage but because they were not saved on time they will live out the rest of their days in their normal bodies these ones and mourn for the rest of their lives the glory that they could have inherited that they lost their inability to reign with Christ for a thousand years because they've only got the remaining last bit of, what do you call this? Their lives. They're not going to live for a thousand years. No, they're going to live for what, whatever's left, 15, 20. Yeah, then they will die in the earth and then get resurrected at the great white throne judgment only to be given their robes then, their eternal bodies then. Yeah, they will repent. But like I said, these people are a crazy remnant. They are a negligible remnant and God wants them in this state because he wants to create um, he's it's like they're, they're going to be a monument an example of what happens when you dishonor god they will have been professing christians prior to the rapture however they will have been prolific witches or incredible saboteurs against the body of christ they will not be killed off by god he will however make them dumb and deaf and basically beastly they will scrummage and eat dust for seven years at the return they will return to their senses and live out in their normal bodies but like i said it's a remnant you can't trust your remnant. The rest of them, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to the rest of them? This is what the Lord showed me, guys, in a dream. I had this terrifically horrible dream. Where it is that I saw, guys, it's like they, like they were all bunched up in one spot because they all landed there more or less at the same time. And they were just skeletons encircled by fire. And they were burning and yelling and screaming in hell. And these people that just arrived, all of them were wearing, listen to this, nun outfits. They were wearing nun outfits, right? N-U-N, like Catholic nuns. And in those, with those nun outfits, there was also engraved. It was like grooved in, almost like it was carved in with a knife. The cross of Jesus on their foreheads. And it was red in color. The cross of Christ was, was engraved on their foreheads. And as they were burning as a collective next to each other, they were wearing nun outfits in that hellfire. They were in nun outfits. All of them. I couldn't recognize their faces, but I knew in that dream that God was showing me, this is what is about to happen to everybody that claimed they were my disciple, but actively participated in the mutiny against my church. The nun outfits was God using essentially a veil like something that is an outward depiction of piety like when you see like if i were to walk out in the street nobody would automatically assume i'm christian but when a nun is walking out in the street people automatically assume they are holy 
women of God, they are consecrated, they are chaste, they are dedicating their lives to the service of God. Not not all nuns are Catholic. They are ca they are Christian nuns. Like you get my point, all right? It's basically a symbol of of piety. Their outfits are a symbol of piety outwardly to society that society can see that this is a nun don't play with that you don't just get to throw the f-bomb in the presence of a nun you don't just get to shell a nun you know like just being licentious with a nun yeah however karabo can be disrespected at first glance because people won't automatically assume i'm christian because it doesn't show outwardly that i am christian i just look like a regular human being and until i start speaking about the lord jesus christ so the nun outfits were symbolic in the sense that these people would have walked around society do you understand what i'm saying with an outward veil of piety to a point of insisting on people respecting that about them and yet they will not have known god so they will have been like the religious leaders, like the Pharisees. They will have insisted upon people seeing them as a godly person. Their public persona would have been re received by largely the ecosystems around them. As they, will, they would have gone out of their way to make that clear. Almost like wearing a nun outfit everywhere they're at. In the office, at work, they know them as Mzalwani. At home, well of course at home, they know them as Mzalwani. Uh, out there, uh, you know... In, in malls always working around with like big chunky crosses maybe even scripture written on their t-shirts like saved by grace rescued from hell like people that go out of their way to show the world hey i'm born again yet they did not know god yet they were dabbling with witchcraft yet they were pulling rags from underneath the feet of true christians yet they yet they people who are wearing nun outfits they were burning collectively in hell and when i asked god yo is this the state of uh, when I woke up, I asked him, is this the, 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 the people that you showed me in that dream? Was it Christians all throughout history, non well, those who professed your name but did not really know you, what they're going to look like in hell? And God was like, no, that's not what I'm showing you in there. What I'm showing you are all the people that would have in the run-up to the rapture, given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, and not endowed, endured sound doctrine, not love the truth, exchanged it for a lie, tried to cause the children of God to sin, the, basically, the two Timothy, the second Timothy three, second Timothy four, first Timothy four conglomerate. The uh, what do you call this? Uh, well, what else am I leaving out? Did I, did I make mention of Second Thessalonians two? Yeah, conglomerate. Those people that have departed from the faith, but not only departed and defected and left it at that, but went out of their way to persecute Christians. Ebo. Those are the ones that God was showing me. He was showing me a whole bunch of Christians that he, not Christians, professing Christians, that he is going to slay, kill, either before the rapture or as at the date of the rapture or shortly afterwards before they can even give their lives to Christ because they will have so angered him that he will be unprepared to salvage them through the recognition of the fact that, whoa, we're at the end. He is going to kill them. He's not going to kill everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it's not everyone that's going to have dedicated their might and soul to the persecution of the church. Others who depart from the faith will have done so and minded their own business, but not so much heaped abuse on true Christians. I'm speaking about those who heaped abuse on true Christians, claiming to be Christian. They're the ones that were in that pit, burning, clumped up together with crosses engraved on their foreheads in red, wearing nun outfits, illity skeletons. The Lord was showing me death is coming to a whole bunch of, never mind witches, but active saboteurs in whatever capacity against the body of christ and those that are doing everything in their power to not only block the gospel from going ahead but cause christians to sin and making them disappear from ministry uh those people who are actively trying to mess with christianity while claiming to be christian that's what i'm getting at those who are messing with christianity while trying claiming to be christian they were the ones in that pit so they are not the Laodicean church. They are not the Sardian church. They are not the Pergamamian church. They are not the Thyatiran church. They are not any of the churches that are given admonition. They are just wiped out. And I saw a whole bunch of them burning together. Literally very shortly from essentially today. It is a judgment that is immediate. And it's going to happen right now. Before or just after the rapture has happened. To make sure they don't repent. Essentially, con again, um, what do you call this thing? Essentially, uh, fulfilling Second Thessalonians two, where it is written: Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
their condemnation has been written about long. The, the intention here is to condemn them, not to judge them with the tribulation that they might repent. This is not, you know, with God, it's a mixture of mercy and judgment. These people have been given mercy on this side of the rapture. What's sealing the deal for them is judgment now. Judgment. Those that will be given a combination of mercy and judgment are the ones that are going to enter the tribulation, realize what's happened, repent in it, and have to endure perseverance of the saints in that horrible time. But these who are actively, feverishly persecuting the body of Christ while claiming to be Christians, they are going to die. They're not going to be given an opportunity to repent in the tribulation. They're not the, like, they don't make up the majority of the apostasy. That's what I'm getting at. They don't make up the majority of the apostasy. They are not a big number. Those, like the people who are all up in my grill, I, how can I describe it? They, they are like, it's like Pareto principle. A small percentage of people are wreaking a great deal of havoc in the body of Christ. And some of them are professing Christians. It is these who are professing Christians, not even the full on 100% satanic coven that can't stand Christians. They're safer in the sight of God and are given a lot more grace than these guys. I'm speaking about people who are professing Christians, actively blocking Christianity. They're going to die. And only a negligible remnant of them is going to get saved. But they're going to get saved through the Nebuchadnezzar experience. Where it is that they're going to be made crazy for the duration of the tribulation. So that they don't inherit incorruptible bodies. So, they, so, the, so that <coughs> sorry, they don't come to the wedding supper of the Lamb. <coughs> and so that therefore uh, they will live out, live out the rest of their lives in a great deal of regret in the millennial reign of jesus christ the rest of it uh, the, the rest of their life that do remain that they're going to spend in the beginning there anyway yeah that's what i saw guys I, I i entered into that whole lengthy description discussion and frankly it is i don't know what time it is now in the morning that i've been speaking but that is a judgment that is coming therefore the moral of this particular story is listen to this okay the moral of the story is this if you are a professing christian that keeps on bewitching the body of christ or you keep on sabotaging christians you keep on pulling rugs from underneath their feet and then you claim that you're in christ and then you apologize to him you have a stupid prayer every so often you very potentially might be among these people and you will die in your sins and god won't give you the rapture as proof that he is unimpressed with you and therefore repent He's not going to give you the rapture because the rapture will confirm that you're not born again. Right now, you've got a delusion of grandeur. Right now, you've got a, a sanctimoniousness, a self-righteousness. Uh, and he's not going to give you that confirmation of it. You are a wicked and a perverse generation that seeks after a sign. He will not give you a sign. He will not give you a sign. He will not give you the sign of the rapture. He won't. He will just kill you before then or very shortly afterwards before you can even say, God, I'm sorry. That's what's about to happen. You are about to die. Do not say that I did not warn you. That is the moral of this particular story. So repent or perish right now, guys, right? You don't have another chance. You don't have, you don't have the tribulation. And again, when it comes to exceptions, what you need to consider yourself as the norm rather than the exception, there's only going to be a negligible remnant of you that get to survive because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And the Lord intends to save you somewhere in the future. You can't assume you're one of them. You can't assume you're one of those that are going to be all sad and forlorn in the millennial reign of Christ because you don't have an incorruptible body and you're all aged and dying and amputated from the tribulation's injuries. You can't assume you're going to be that girl. You very potentially and largely likely are going to be among those that are in the pit because you claimed to be Christian and yet you were blocking the gospel. Don't say, I did not warn you. I am signing out in the name of Jesus Christ. Cran K. Peace.